Here are three words that I bet you're not using in your Coast 20 markers that could push the level of your response up by one. Let's recap exactly what those three words are and why they're so important to include in your 20 markers in Coasts. I'm talking about the coastal sediment cell. What's that? Okay, let me take you through the coastal sediment cell. Theory recap first. So if you remember, the coastal sediment cell is a theory about how sediment moves around the coastal systems. In theory, it's a closed system. Closed system means there's a finite amount of sediment that's moving round. So if you remember, our coastal sediment cells are delineated by certain features, normally something like a headland or the mouth of a river. Now in theory, sediment doesn't come in from this sediment cell here and it doesn't leave going into this sediment cell here. This is why it's a closed system and it acts within a dynamic equilibrium. So already we're getting in those key terms that are gonna elevate the level of our response. Examiners are gonna see that. They will see that you've got a higher level of theoretical understanding. So at these points here, maybe we've got some erosion taking place. Now with erosion, within the context of the coastal sediment cell, you wanna talk about there being inputs. That's inputs. So inputs of sediment into the coastal sediment cell. Now from where there's inputs, we call this the source. These are our source regions. Sediments in the system. What happens next? When sediment is put into the system, then it's gonna be transported. Now think about what can transport sediment. Inquiry question two is all about the movement process, how sediment is then moved. So once in the system, sediment is going to move. Now let's say sediment gets to something like a beach. Sediment is gonna be moved and it can be moved via various processes. This process here, longshore drift. Now, wherever sediment is moving, so it's in transit, we call this a transfer zone. Let's recap. So you've got a source where sediment goes into the system. A transfer zone where sediment is moving through the system. And then finally, where our sediment loses energy, sort of around here, this is where we've got outputs. Otherwise known as deposition. And this is obviously where we'll get our depositional features. Now where deposition takes place, the sink zones. That's our coastal sediment cell. We've got sources of sediment, inputs of sediment into the system transfer zones where sediment is being transferred through the sediment cell it's moving or whatever is transporting the sediment loses energy deposition will take place outputs into our sink zones and that's where we'll get our depositional features such as spits such as bars such as sand dunes such as tombolos so why am i showing you this firstly as i've already mentioned we were introduced to this concept of dynamic equilibrium. Just throwing in these really advanced terms shows that you've made that jump from GCSE geography to A-level geography. The examiners are going to see that, yeah, dynamic equilibrium. They know that you theoretically see that as a closed system. And then within the dynamic equilibrium, you know there's going to be negative and positive feedback mechanisms. So all of this advanced geography is going to come into play. So why is it that I'm sharing this concept with you? When an examiner is marking a 20 mark question, they're looking for you to demonstrate certain competencies. And that jump from GCSE to A-level geography is all about showing that you can link theoretical concepts to the real world, that you can weave it into questions where relevant. I've seen the coastal sediment cell theory work very well in paragraphs about physical processes. Without the physical processes, would there be those inputs of sediment into the system? The answer is no. Could we evaluate coastal management strategies even better than we already do? Yes, we can. We can use the concept of the coastal sediment cell. In most cases, what happens when we use some kind of hard engineering strategy, whether it be a seawall, whether it be rock armor, whether it be groins, we're interfering with the natural background processes and there will be knock on effects further down drift. With the seawall, we're reducing inputs. With groins, we're interfering with longshore drift through the transfer zone. So what's gonna to happen to the size of our sink zones? Naturally, they're going to decrease in size and there are gonna be losers in that case. So the sediment cell theory has such applicability across the entire specification. And like I've said before, using those key terms, dynamic equilibrium, negative feedback mechanisms, positive feedback mechanisms, these are all of the things that the examiner is gonna be able to see and say this is a top level three slash level four geography student. So give it a go. In your next essay, why not try weaving in that theory of the coastal sediment cell?